Okay. Y'all ready? Yeah. All right then. Well, if y'all came from the last video, the gear video, thanks for coming and watching this one too. Um, the title of the video is How to Hunt Coyotes in the Southeast. And that's not 100% accurate because there's not one way. There's, we're not experts. This isn't the only way. <laughs> Bless Sorry. you. Sneezing does not help call them yeah, in. Yeah, it doesn't help when you call them in and you're sneezing. Um, but this is how we hunt coyotes in the southeast. Um, we're in western North Carolina. The The terrain is very mountainous, very hilly, very... Uh, got a lot of draws, a lot of ridges, a lot of haulers. So, as we mentioned in the previous video, we do not hunt the wind. Daytime, nighttime... We, you can't try and hunt the wind. Right now, there is no wind. Give it five minutes and there will be a five to 10 mile an hour wind. Give it another five to 10 minutes and it'll be coming from a different direction and it's just, it's too hard. So, um, I'm sure some people still try to hunt the wind around here, but we don't. We haven't found that it matters very much. Um, honestly, we don't daytime hunt a whole lot. Um, we will kind of to, to fill time on Saturdays or Fridays if we're not working. Um, we we mainly nighttime hunt, but if we do hunt in the daytime, daytime, nothing changes except we're sitting down and most of us use a different rifle if we've got it with us. If all we've got is our thermals, we still hunt in the daytime with the thermals occasionally. Um, that's that's about the only thing that changes so what we thought we would do is um, the calls are going to be different all the time of the year all times of the year the uh, or the sounds you use on the call the the setups vary spot to spot um, the the way we set up varies versus if we're wanting to make two stands on a specific area or if it's just one trying to cover the whole area um, it, it all just varies a whole lot there's no good way to show all of what we do but we're going to try and show a little bit of it just so the people who are just starting they kind of know um, what we're doing for the most part so what we're going to do right now is y'all are going to have to use your imagination a little bit. It's daytime, it's not nighttime, and we've drove our truck all the way up to, to where we're standing now, so we're not going to be walking very far, but we're going to do a, a mock hunt, like we're getting out of the truck and we're going to hunt some coyotes. Um, I'm not going to be in the video because I'm going to be trying to film it, and it's not going to be set up on a tripod like it is now. Um, it'll be a little bit shakier, but just trying to help a little bit um, for the people who are just getting started or the people who have maybe hit a lull and uh, just want to see a little bit of what we do. So we're going to get right to it. You going to sling the call over your shoulder too, Dad? Yep. I'll walk it out there and we'll get 10 feet and then I'll say, how did you get the call? Yeah. All right. So we've just got out of the truck. We're getting ready to go. We grab our tripods out of the back of the truck and get them stood up and set up and No mag in the gun for the video. Yeah, no mag in the gun for the video. Dad will end up putting a mag in his because he's gonna he's gonna mock shooting a coyote. But uh we just get them set up on the tripods, lock everything down so that way we can tote them going through the woods. Dad usually carries the call for us. So we'll grab the tripods and walk out just a little bit. All right. We usually set the call about 30 yards, any, anywhere in between 30 yards and 70 is about the farthest we ever do. 
And usually dad will tote his tripod and set it up and then one of us will go put out the call. And while one of us is putting out the call, the other ones will be uh, getting their tripod situated like you just saw Peyton do. We'll be scanning, we'll be trying to uh, make sure nothing's in the field and make sure nothing's about to, uh, to bust us. But uh, call's set up. I don't guess you turned the call on, did you dad? Oh, you, he did turn the call on, so I'll get the remote turned on. I tote the remote. Um, I run the call most of the time. Gosh, I can't get the... I keep my Fox Pro on nighttime mode, so... I can't see it right now. Sun's in my eyes too much, so we're not going to play a call, but we'll play a how me and Peyton stand with our scanners like that dad show them how you uh how you scan on the gun you don't have to have a scanner dad just he's on his gun he's scanning doing spins around his tripod in our in our experience the movement does not change too much um it, they don't they don't spook from the movement at night and so he just he does spins around his tripod and then when we see one me and Peyton drop our scanners and then we get we get on our guns and we get ready to go we back up if we need to we uh, move forward if we need to make sure everybody's got a good view and everybody's safe so right now we've played a couple howls we've uh, we've played a rabbit in distress and that didn't work and so we've moved to a uh, pup distress or a, a coyote fight or something like that and I think again use your imagination dad sees a coyote at 310 yards so he's gonna get real steady on his tripod Tell me when you want me to stop it. Woo! Impact. Payton was ready on the back up there. <laughs> that was the only one that came in and he just dropped it. So now begins the trek. Like I said, you see that big valley there? It may have been 300 yards, but we're about to have to walk about 600 to get to it. So at that point, we'll lock our guns down on the tripods on the ball heads, like that right there, so they're staying stable. And uh, we'll go get it. So that's the fun part about shooting ARs. We get to spin and reloading for your AR. We get to spend the next 30 minutes looking for the shell and this, this stuff right here just so we can take the brass home and try to reload it. <laughs> but I've got it down to a sign. I, I, know, I know mine is like nine, nine feet from my gun, so I step it out and I do an arc and, and, and it, like this for till we find it or give up. <laughs> And that's what tuning your AR does. He's got it, like he said, he's got it down to a science. It's about nine feet. He walks away from it. He uh, he does his little arc there, and we usually find the brass. So. Pretty <laughs> dark. Peyton has decided that he's seen another coyote, and so he's going to crack one off at it. Well, that one's running. Oh, up high? He's a little high, Dad says. Oh, he's going again. He's got two boxes of shells now. Impact. Come on, bet on. Them Banish 30s and uh, Yankee Hill Resonator R2s. They are uh, phenomenal suppressors. For the screen, it'll pop up. Okay. So daytime stands, pretty much the same thing. 
generally we walk farther in the daytime. Um, I don't know why. I don't really know that it matters because the coyotes can see it not. Uh, setup's the same. I've still got my remote. I run my nighttime chest rig, same thing, because I run my scanner during the daytime. Um, it helps to, to see them in the brush and stuff like that. But uh, well, same thing. Our tripods are just a little bit shorter because we sit down, but we still carry them in. Same thing. Just a glass scope on there and we set them down. I like to keep my tripod a little bit higher because I'll sit down or sit on a knee like this. Um, I don't like completely sitting down. I just don't feel like I can move like I want to, so I'll stay like this a lot of the time. But uh, same thing, you just, it, it's, it's light out. We run glass scopes, most of us. Um, still run the, the same sounds. I still howl, I still use prey distress. Um, I still use coyote fights and pup fights. Um, a general sequence for us Unless we're specifically hunting a bobcat, a, a nuisance bobcat in the daytime or somewhere that we know there's a lot of bobcats, um, we'll start with a howl and give it two, three minutes after the howl's over with. Then, depending on the time of the year, right now it's winter time, um, so right after a howl, I'll go into some kind of prey distress generally. Um, I, I don't know what distress, it just, like I said, it depends on the day. Um, call it rabbit distress. I'll let that play for five to seven minutes, alternating the volume up and down. Um, then most of the time, I will go into a, another howl, generally a challenge or an aggressive howl, and then most of the time, I'll, I'll roll it into a pup fight, uh, a coyote fight, coyote whimpers, pup distress three, uh, MFK pound town. That sound's been kind of played out. Everybody loves it, but it still works occasionally. Um, I try to save some, one of my better coyote and distress sounds for after a shot is taken. That's kind of a, a general not like a secret, but that's something that uh, most people don't talk about is saving some sort of predator coyote distress sound for after a shot is taken. That will drag in the, the one or two stragglers or if one's kind of, you didn't see one off to your right, maybe it'll come running in. Um, I, I like to, to save one of those sounds, but Daytime is the same thing, except for in a glass scope, we can dial up. And we like our long range shots. We like uh, like being able to have the option to shoot them when they hang up a long ways away. So I've been calling, uh, I've made it to, to prey distress, and one's getting a little curious, but it's not committed. It doesn't want to come all the way in. So again, a mock coyote has, has hung up up here at, what is that pay? You got your scanner out, 420, 430? 428 for me. 428, so it's hung up up there. I'm gonna dial my scope up. You gonna get on the... moved on me all right impact it's tough. 428 yards and we uh the only thing I don't have sitting here with me is the camera. I generally run the camera unless it's Dad and Peyton have done a whole lot of shooting and then I'll make them run the camera. But uh, I generally have a camera sitting right here so that I can run it like this. 
Um, if y'all want to see what camera and what setup with the auxiliary screen, it's in the previous video. Um, but I'll have it sitting right here so I can run it, and then I'm on the gun. And I'm running, that's why I run a ball head. So no matter where it comes to, I can get on it. And as you can see, 428, I'm stable enough up on a knee and like this to where that's a 12 inch plate up there. That's generally a, a kill zone for a, a mature size coyote. So um, not much changes, like I said, daytime versus nighttime. Um, I'd love to be able to give you sequences that work, but there's 12 months in the year and we hunt every one of them. So there, it's gonna be different sequences, different sounds, um, breeding season, mating season, uh, pup denning season, uh, pups getting kicked out, family bust up like Tori Cook talks about. It's all a little bit different. So the sequences are gonna change. Um, the, the intensity of the calls are gonna change but the shooting and the setups are the same. Um, one thing I think we forgot to mention, in the daytime, we don't care about it as much. Um, we try to have our silhouettes covered and we try our very best for filming purposes to have the sun at our back. But like just then, the sun was right directly over top of the target. So it doesn't matter as much at nighttime with us standing up, we like to have some sort of cover. Even if it's just a single four inch tree, that's enough of a breakup for my likings. Um, or we try to get on the, the bottom side of the, not the bottom side, but down low enough on a hill to where we're not silhouetted. And uh, that's generally all we do as far as a, a setup goes. We don't have to have a, a blind or, or a big tree line to break us up, just something to break up your silhouette. That's all a coyote is gonna be seeing until they get within 100-ish yards. And generally, by that point, unless we're running shotguns, um, we've already made a shot on them at, at 100 yards. We, we're scared of them. We don't like them to get in real close, I guess. But uh, it's pretty much the same thing if you're running shotguns. Me and Peyton will shotgun them occasionally on some public land here. At that point, we sit against a tree in the woods most of the time. There's not many public fields around us. And so uh, you sit against a tree, that'll break up your outline. In the woods, we have found it's, it's better to play the wind if you can, but if not, it's why we carry the coyote pee. We spray it a little bit around us and most of the time we're good to go. So. If y'all have any specific questions, I'll try my best to answer them. Like I said, none of us are professionals. We don't get paid to do this. There's a lot of people that kill a lot more dogs than us. There's a lot of people that hunt a whole lot more frequently than we do because we have, we have jobs that, that we work year round, five days a week, six days a week, and we got chores we gotta take care of. So. There's a lot of people that, that are probably a whole lot better than us, but like I said, when me and Peyton was growing up, we've been doing it about 11, 12 years now, we would have killed for somebody to make a video like this that's not in South Dakota or Arizona or Utah, the places where predator hunting is a whole lot bigger than it is around here, but that doesn't help us any because none of the terrain's the same, none of the the calling is the same, and the coyotes just act differently. Um, see if you can pan. See if you can pan to this over here, Dad. In this, in this bowl we've got here, it, it, you can't just like out west. Me and Peyton hunt in South Dakota every year. Um, out there, you have to scan 360 degrees constantly. This is a a good showing of what we hunt most of the time. There's six or seven different draws all within 400 yards of us. And so we don't have to, to do 360s. We can watch these certain draws and certain hilltops that they're gonna pop over and, and check stuff out a lot. And uh, logging roads. Logging roads. Um, I'll come down a logging road just as quick as any. Cuts in the briars. Show them this cut in the briars right here. Uh, that's where, to the left a little, right there, 
this hill right here you can see the mode marks that's where most stuff pops up right here because they just pop over and, and like to check it out, but they're still concealed in them briars. So it, there's a lot that goes into hunting around here that is nothing like hunting in other places. So we hope this video helps. Like I said, if you have specific questions or you have uh, anything else that you would like to see, then please let us know. Feel free to comment. Um, like I said, either any of us are more than happy to share any information that we've learned over the years. And we all love research. So if we don't have the answer, we'll try to find the answer for you. So uh, please leave us a comment asking questions, letting us know uh, what you think about it. Uh, if you all have any tips for us, we're more than open to, uh, to a few tips to, to help improve our, our coyote hunting. So. Uh, we appreciate y'all watching and uh, see you on the next one.